Hey everyone, it's Fahim, pharmacy prescriber, contractor, fan of Medlearn and welcome to this video because I'm going to be showing you how you take a medical history and it's going to be great. Now before you go anywhere, I always say subscribe, like and share this channel because together we are going to build an absolute beautiful world. And everybody's watching because today I'm going to show you how you take a history properly. Now, for those of you who don't know me, as I've explained before, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a medical student, and I've been practicing for over 10 years, and I've been taking histories for over 10 years. That's right, folks, if you're a pharmacist and you're watching this, you too have been taking a medical history, you do it all the time. But what we're talking about today, and here's that piece of paper that we have all the time, my good friend, which is the list that we're going through, you probably can't see this, but it's a reminder for me, and that is how you take a history properly. Now, the topics that we're going to be covering today is history taking for pharmacists and we're going to break this down into very small, small subtopics. First area is going to be what is history taking? Second area is going to be why is it important? After that we're going to look at the role of history taking in the pharmacist and then if we're lucky today I'm going to be showing you exactly how we take that history absolutely step by step and you guys are absolutely going to love it because it's going to save you time and remember Taking a history is not just about actually following a script because essentially I always say you could teach a monkey how to take a history but it's what you do with the history what separates you from the monkey so keep that in mind. So first of all what is the history? Let me explain something to you. When you have a patient who has certain signs and symptoms you have to be able to gather that information from that patient properly in a timely manner and correctly building trust, empathy, to make sure that you can help reach that diagnosis. Because patients present with signs and symptoms, patients don't present with a diagnosis. For example, you'll have a patient who will present with earache, chest pain, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, urinary frequency, maybe they might have a particular rash, a headache, maybe dizziness, ringing in the ear. That's what patients present with discharge from the eye. You have to be able to find out what is causing those symptoms and then go ahead and treat this. That's really important. Now I've been quite fortunate to be spending time with a lot of colleagues and doctors and have learned how to take a history and have had enough time to practice it. Remember the key to anything is practice. So you have to learn the trade or the art. You then have to be watched to make sure you're doing it properly and then you have to practice it. And for those of you who are struggling with developing your clinical skills or you're not sure where to start, get in touch with us at MedLearn. We're more than happy to help you and happy to take you on that journey together. So first of all, what is history taking? I like to think of history taking as just an interview. Imagine you're a detective and you've got that magnifying glass or whatever it is and what you're doing is you're gathering information from the patient. You have a crime scene. This patient's presented with an earache and you're trying to find out what has caused that earache. Now, the history is only as important as you knowing your differential diagnosis. So as much as a history taking is very important, if I said to you right now, tell me 10 causes of an earache, otitis media, otitis externa, cholesteatoma, foreign body, and so on and so on, fungal infection and so on, or eczema, cellulitis, folliculitis, whatever. If you can't ring off this, these list of conditions, even if you take a history, you won't be able to apply the knowledge. So this video is not about the clinical decision making process or the diagnosis. This is about how you take a history. But remember, if you've got a patient who presents with chest pain and you can't think of heart attack, you can't think of heart failure, you can't think of a musculoskeletal problem, costochonditis or whatever it might be, then even if you take a history, what will you do with the history? The history is just the interview. You're gathering information from that patient. But that's only important if you can match it with the disease states. Pause this video to try understanding this. Let me explain it again. If you've got a patient who presents with an earache or a chest pain, let's say shortness of breath, and you can't think of all the conditions that cause a shortness of breath, even if you took a history and you found out when did it happen, how did it happen, what makes it worse, what makes it better, tell me your family history, why does it matter? It's not relevant. So in order to reach a clinical diagnosis, you have to know common signs and symptoms. 
you also have to know the disease is inside out. And I want to briefly touch on this. For every disease as a minimum, you should know. Number one, the incidence. How the incidence affects the disease. The age. Some diseases might be more common in a certain age. The sex. How does sex affect the disease? For example, an ectopic pregnancy is more common in a woman. Etiology, what causes it? Is it bacterial? Is it fungal? Viral? Just inflammatory? The geography. Certain conditions might be more common in certain geography. You also want to know about pathology. What happens when your body is faced with this change? What are the signs or the symptoms? That could be microscopic, microscopic. You also want to know, as I mentioned, signs and symptoms, and then treatment, prognosis, and then the guidelines. So that's about the disease state. So once you know this, and I would mention differential diagnosis, then it's relevant taking a history. Keep that in mind. There is no use in you learning a history if you can't apply the knowledge. So what is a history? Briefly, all a history is, is the patient interview, is you gathering that information from the patient in a structured way. That's what it is. So the next thing that we're going to talk about, thank you Teja, is why is a history important? And I've briefly touched on this. And that is that if you cannot build trust with your patient, if you cannot gather the right information by asking the right questions from your patient, how are you going to extract that information and compare it to the theory you know? For example, let's pick an example of, let's say hay fever. And with hay fever, you would need to ask the patient, do you suffer with this all year round? Do you get these symptoms only in the summer? Do you suffer with, let's say for example, other conditions that may be atopic like conjunctivitis or asthma? So again, by gathering that information, you can then compare it to the theory that you know about the diseases, and then you reach that diagnosis. And actually, Farooq, what I'd like you to do, I want you to focus on this piece of paper right now if you can. Deja, can I borrow a pen? Thank you. I want to explain something to you nicely here. Now, let's have a look at this. This is, and you can bring the camera around. This is the patient. And we're going to put patient here. And the patient has certain signs and symptoms. The patient says, I've got an earache. Okay. The first thing you have to know is you need to know the causes of an earache. For example, otitis media, otitis externa, cholestia toma. I'm just going to put this here. Let's say some sort of foreign object. We can say it could be some sort of inflammatory eczema. It could be simply just some trauma. Right, we've got a list. Now what you have to know is what's the difference between all of these. So otitis media, for example, and again, let's talk about incidence, age, sex, geography, etiology, pathology, and that's going to be microscopic, macroscopic, then signs, symptoms, and then we have treatment and differentials, for example. Otitis media, what do we know about otitis media? It's more common before the age, and I'm just going to put this down, between five to six years. That's one thing that separates otitis media from otitis externa. This patient is a 50-year-old male. So you can see that otitis media is going to be more common in a child than an adult. Also, what we know about otitis media or acute otitis media is you normally have fever or you can have fever. This person has no fever. So that's you gathering the information. We also know with acute otitis media, some of the risk factors are smoking. If you're a child who suffers with respiratory problems in the past, let's say you're breastfed and we're not doing a topic on otitis media, but I'm trying to explain to you about how I'm using the history. Again, this is not a child. This person is not a smoker. So you might say actually acute otitis media unlikely. What do we find on examination? On examination, you have the tympanic membrane and this tympanic membrane is normally bulging and there'll be inflammation. But in otitis externa, we don't normally get the tympanic membrane bulging. 
we don't normally have inflammation of the tympanic membrane. Instead, you have the canal itself. And I'm just going to draw this out for you here. Just a bit of anatomy, very important for you to know your anatomy. Here's the tympanic membrane. And here you have the external acoustic meatus. So this point here in an acute otitis externa is normally inflammation here. But an acute otitis media, the problem is here. So again, that's quite important to know the differences. Risk factors for otitis externa, you may suffer with eczema, you may suffer or you might enjoy swimming, that contains a pH, you might be wearing headphones. So again, by taking the history, you can ask the right questions. Do you swim? You swim, more chance of otitis externa. Is it a child? More chance of otitis media. What about your signs and symptoms? What do we see on examination? So your history is just through gathering the information and then comparing with the knowledge that you already have. And there's an art to this. You have to be able to gather the information because you have to build trust with the patient. That's where history taking is more than a set of questions. It's about building a relationship, communicating properly, asking open questions, close questions. It's about documenting your findings and then it's about making sure you can match all this together. That's why that's important. Now, what is the role of history taking in a pharmacist? Well, if you turn the camera around, Farouk, show the patients there. We've got plenty of patients, as you can see there. And you can see there are patients there, and these patients have presented with certain signs and symptoms. So the pharmacist is dealing with patients all the time. So if you're dealing with patients, that means you're going to be dealing with conditions that need to be diagnosed. That means you're always going to be taking a history. Some of you might remember WAM. WAM is a very basic or a primitive form of taking a history. So you're always taking a history, but what I'm teaching you today is how you do it on a larger scale, a more effective way, and a way that can certainly help you reach the diagnosis. So that's why it's important. If you're seeing patients, then you've got to be able to take a history properly. And in our clinic, where we have doctors and we see patients all the time, we always are taking a history and we have to make sure that we're diagnosing and treating properly. So that's important. Now, let's talk about how you take a history. So that's going to be quite important because right now I'm going to show you the framework about history taking. And after that, in a separate video, I'll demonstrate it to you from start to finish. So Farouk, I would like you to focus on my paper here. The first thing in a history taking is going to be the introduction. Introduction. Now, with the introduction, what you want to do is you want to start with this. You'll say, hello, my name is Fahim. I'm a pharmacy prescriber. Can I start off by confirming your name, address, date of birth, contact number? So you gather that information. You then ask the patient, how do you identify yourself? Male, female, and so on. Once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to outline to the patient exactly what we're going to be doing today. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be asking you some questions. And then after that, I'd also like to know, gather some more information from yourself. And I may also need to examine you. So you're gaining consent. I also think it's very important at this point to mention about a chaperone. Having a chaperone is very, very important. So what have we done first? We've discussed about your title, who you are, your role. We've discussed about making sure you gather the patient information, the chaperone policy. We've also discussed about confidentiality. And then we've outlined the purpose of the consultation. So you're setting the scene. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to look at the presenting complaint. And what you should do on a piece of paper, and Farouk, I'm sorry, I'm bringing you back again, is we should have a piece of a, doc, a paper and put down here, present a complaint. So this is essentially, this is where your patient is going to have some signs and symptoms and you're going to be writing the headline story. So let's say you've got a patient who's presenting with earache. You'll summarize this. And we can imagine Zushama here who has an earache. Zushama, you have an earache. So Zushama is a 20, how old are you? Oh, we should, let's ignore this. She's a 20-year-old female patient who presents with left-sided earache. That's your presenting complaint. So think of it as the headline story. So we write that down. And we can just write that basically here. Presenting complaint. Then what you have is your history of presenting complaint. 
So, when we lead from here, I think the question you should ask is, what brings you here today, or how can I help you? And this is where, for example, Zushama will say, I have an earache that started when? Um, a week ago. A week ago. So she'll say, I've got this right-sided earache that started a week ago. I don't know why that is. And you'll just write that down as a presenting complaint. Right-sided earache, 20-year-old female patient, started one week ago. After this, what you'll do is you might ask the patient, and again, an open-ended question, tell me a bit more about this earache. And that's where the patient will start to tell you a bit more about the earache. And just give me one moment. Uh, Zushama, you've just got a patient there. So, again, where was I? You've now asked the patient, tell me a bit more about this earache. And this is where the patient will start to tell you more information. So they might say, it started five days ago. There's discharge. It's painful. I've never had this before. Just listen to them. At some point, it might also be important, maybe at the start, to mention to them that from time to time, I'm going to be documenting writing notes. So please don't think I'm ignoring you. Because imagine that you're talking to me and I've got my head down and my writing. The patient might feel actually you're being ignored. So that's very, very important to make sure that your patient doesn't feel that they're being ignored. That's quite important for you to remember. So as I explained to you, what we've done is we're getting the patient or giving the patient an opportunity to speak to us. And here, what we have afterwards, we have the history of presenting complaint. And I like to use an acronym, OLCART. Now, this is where you can ask about the onset, the location, duration, character. This is more good for pain, the character of the pain. Associated symptoms, SXME symptoms. We can also ask about aggravating factors, what makes it worse, or what makes it better, relief and treatment. This is you gathering a bit of information about the condition itself. And remember, when the patient says to you about the presenting complaint, like right-sided earache for one week, at this point, you should have your list of conditions that can cause earache. If you cannot make a list of conditions that cause an earache, it doesn't matter what we do afterwards, you are not going to be able to reach that diagnosis. Understand this. When a patient has given you a set of symptoms, you have to know your differentials. For example, shortness of breath. You may have a pneumothorax. You may have exacerbation of asthma, COPD. You may have a pulmonary embolism. You may have musculoskeleton, chest pain. You may have heart related. You may have gastro related. It could be, it could be pretty much, again, a, a whole host of conditions that can cause chest pain itself. It could be exercise. So again, that's really important for you to remember that the presenting complaint, if you cannot or cannot come up with a list or have a list of conditions in mind, doesn't matter what you do afterwards, it's failed. So after the presenting complaint and the patient has spoken, so this patient's speaking, 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 you can then ask specific questions. When did it start? What's the location? What about the duration? The character if it's painful? Tell us any other symptoms you have. Aggravating factors, relief and treatment. But again, even a monkey can be thought, thought, can be taught to ask these questions. This is only as relevant as you knowing your differentials and knowing the conditions inside out. But anyway, once you've got the history of presenting complaint, mm -hmm. you can then move on to family history. And this is where you ask the patient about, for the family history, you can ask the patient about, is there any history of any long-term conditions? Do you suffer with diabetes, cholesterol, high cholesterol, asthma, COPD? Again, this information is giving you risk factors. For example, if you've got a patient who has had a heart attack and there's a family history of diabetes, there's a family history of a heart attack, you're thinking, right, there's a high risk that the chest pain that you have could be because of a heart attack. Let's say you've got a child who has a earache or has a fever and the mother explains to you actually yeah everybody else in the family also has a cold a cough then you can link that together again that's the family history after this you might want to go into the past medical history 
What do you suffer with? Do you suffer with diabetes? God forbid, immunocompromise, cancers, asthma. Because again, you're finding information from the patient because this can all help you with risk factors that increase the chance of getting a disease. So we've got presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, family history, past medical history, social history. Ask about the social history. Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? How many units do you drink? What's your diet like? What's your exercise like? What do you do for work? Is there any information there that helps with the condition itself? For example, somebody has, let's say, suffering with heart or a lung or a chest problem because they have been exposed to asbestos. You'd want to know, where are you working? Could it be work-related? Maybe they've got asthma that is work-related, occupation-related. You want to know, where are you working? Maybe that's triggering it. So again, that's your social history. Drug history, very important. What drugs are you taking? What about any allergies to foods or medication? Do you take anything over the counter? And when you take a drug history, if you're a pharmacist, make sure that you gather that information. Are they taking the drugs properly? Are they taking them as prescribed? Can you counsel them? Then you might want to go on to surgical history. Have you had any sort of surgery? Because again, that's quite important. Any surgery that could help with the diagnosis. You might examine a patient and they might have certain scars on the actual abdomen or the thorax and that could be related to certain surgery. That may be helpful for you. So we've got presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, social history, drug history, family history, past medical history, surgical history, sexual history might be relevant. If you've got a patient who suffers with, or you may think might be having an STI, you might want to ask, how do you practice sex? Is it oral sex? Is it vaginal sex? Is it anal sex? Whatever it might be. Again, that's very, very important as well for you to gather that information. Once you've done that, for females, it's important for you to gather a menstrual history. Is there any chance of pregnancy? When did you have your first period? When did your periods finish? When did you last have your periods? Are they regular? After that, I like to go into the review of systems. And that is so, so important to do a review of systems. And let me tell you how I like to carry out a review of systems. And my colleague here, we've got Zushama here, and how I like to think of carrying a review of systems, start with the head. So ask the patient, do you have any headaches? And she's not listening, I think she's ignoring us. Do you have any headaches? Do you have any... She has headaches. She doesn't want to be on YouTube. Do you have any headaches? What about any eye problems? What about loss of vision? Because we're starting with the head. Apparently she has eye problems, so you need to go to spec savers. So what about any eye problems that you have? What about any headaches that you have? What about your sore throat? Any swallowing problems? Then we can move down and we've got the chest afterwards. Ask about any chest pain, any shortness of breath. Then move down and go to the abdomen. Do you have any abdominal pain? Are you passing your stools? Then move down. You've got the genitalia. You can talk about any rashes, lumps or bumps around the genitalia. What about your periods? What about you passing urine? Have you passed urine regularly? And I've got somebody blowing kisses at me at the back. I'm not too sure why, but fair enough. So again, once you've done that, you go to the legs and ask about any lesions, rashes, lumps and bumps on the body itself. So again, I've done an entire review of systems, starting with the head. Any headaches, any dizziness, any excessive anxiety, any depressive symptoms, mental health, eyes, any loss of vision, any eye pain, any discharge. What about the nose? Is it patent, is it open? Loss of smell, so on. Mouth, any rashes in the mouth, any lesions in the mouth, sore throat, difficulty swallowing and so on. What about the ears itself? Any discharge, any earache? Again, that's really important. Then we move down, we've spoken about the throat, we go to the chest. Any shortness of breath, any chest pain, any palpitations? Again, quite important, go to the abdomen and we can then talk about any abdominal pain. Have you passed your stools? Go down, what about urine? Have you passed urine? Periods? Then talk about the entire body, any rashy lumps or bumps. Again, your review of systems can save you. So as I've explained to you, uh, it's really, really important for you to have a structure in place. And I have a structure, I have my introduction. Hello, my name is Fahim, I'm a pharmacist prescriber, and I'd like to gather some information from you. What is your name, address, date of birth, contact number? How do you identify yourself? Afterwards, I'll say about our chaperone policy, that we have a policy where we always have to have a chaperone. Is that okay with you? After this, you'll explain about confidentiality. Any conversation we have is confidential. I may have to share this with the GP, get the patient GP details. Then explain to the patient exactly what's about to happen. I'm going to be gathering some information. I may also have to examine you 
which will involve me having a look, having a feel and so on. Is that okay with you? Yes or no? We then move on to how can I help? They'll then mention some symptoms. That's your presenting complaint. After that, you gather more information by asking them, tell me a bit more about your symptoms. They might say nothing else. Then you use the acronym. When did it happen? Location, duration, character, associated symptoms, aggravating symptoms, signs, symptoms, relief and treatment that you've tried. All of this is only relevant if you've got your differentials. If you don't have your differentials, folks, it's not going to work. All you're doing is gathering information. I've told you many times, a monkey can be taught how to take a history. Again, no issues with monkeys. I love animals, but I'm just trying to explain and get the point across that anybody can be taught how to do this. You as a pharmacist, the clinician, you need to make sure you can marry up this information with the diagnosis and bang, we then have exactly what's causing the patient, the symptoms. Then you can go in any order, past medical history, family history, social history, drug history, surgical history, menstrual history, sexual history, and then at the end, the review of systems. Start with the head and neck. Any eye pain, loss of vision, discharge, double vision. Ears, ringing the ear, discharge, earache, headaches, dizziness, throat, difficulty swallowing, any discharge, any lesions, lumps or bumps. Start moving down. We then have the thorax, shortness of breath, chest pain, palpitations. We can start to go a bit lower. We've got the abdomen. So that's going to be quite important. Ask about have you passed your stools and so on. Then you can move down. What about urination? When did you pass your urine? Because again, for a UTR, that's important. If the patient hasn't passed their urine, could there be an obstruction? And there you're treating a UTI, then an obstruction. Menstrual history. And then after that, we start moving down and we've got these signs and symptoms in the body itself. Ask about skin. And once you've done that, I would say it's also important to manage the patient's expectations, their concerns, and don't forget about empathy and so on. Then talk about the examination. Now remember, the history guides the examination. If you just examine a patient and you don't know about the history and you don't have your differentials, you're wasting your time. Again, as always, subscribe, like and share. Together, let's build a better world. I hope you enjoyed this video. And in future videos, I'll show you exactly how you take a history. Thank you for watching. Look after yourself, folks. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Fahim, pharmacy prescriber, contractor, fan of Medlearn, and welcome to this video because I'm gonna be showing you how you take a medical history and it's gonna be great. Now before you go anywhere, I always say subscribe, like and share this channel because together we are going to build an absolute beautiful world.